Greetings, men of 222. It's great to be with you today. It's great to be with those who are <clears throat> in the uh, barracks and great to be with those who are online. These things are available uh, by going to www.columbuscrusaders.org uh, Crusader, or they're even on YouTube under 222 Space Men's Fellowship. So um, if you want to hear one or rehear one, they're available to you. So almost a year ago to the day, speaking of messages, uh, I gave a message on Barnabas under the topic of initiative. It was literally um, March the 4th, almost a year ago. And while Barnabas is the hero for encourager in general, I'm going to take a different approach today. I'm going to drill down in the scripture with some illustrations to give you a more in-depth view of what encouragement really is and how it works. And if you don't hear anything else today, but these scriptures, you'll see how important encouraging can be. And I have to start with Proverbs 18, 21a, and it says, death and life are in the power of the tongue. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. God thought that what we said to people is so important, it either lifts them up in life or it brings them down like death. The second one is this, it says, uh, Proverbs 10 verse 11 says, the mouth of the righteous is a fountain of life, but the mouth of the wicked conceals violence. A fountain of life, you know, you can see that the scriptures believe so much that this is critical to be an encourager, to be one who lifts up to life. We're certainly in called to, or we are certainly called to uh, encourage our children, but we're also called to encourage our spouses. Frankly, it's hardest to be nice to those that we're around the most, isn't it? And yet, that relationship is critical if you have a wife. At work, are you seen as an encourager or a discourager? To use uh, Pastor Bo and and the transformational leadership terminology. Are you a tank filler or are you a tank emptier to be around? And you certainly want to be a tank filler, don't you? At work, so everyone needs encouragement. And that reminds me of a true story about a father and his three-year-old daughter, and she was mad at him. And she yelled at him, she yelled, I hate you. And his response was, that's okay, I hate you too. Well, he was trying to be funny, but his daughter and his wife didn't see the humor in it. And by the way, though they have a great relationship today, that daughter still remembers that comment, so does that father. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Now, many of us went to college and we learned a terrible communication skill there called sarcasm. Sarcasm uh, is just terrible. It's when you say something to somebody and you mean the exact opposite, generally. I remember telling one of my players at Licking Heights one time, uh, I, and, and it, would, it was a terrible play, and I said, nice play. Well, he thought I was giving him a compliment, and when in fact I was unhappy with his play. And you might say, well, well was he stupid? No, some people just believe that you ought to say what you ought to say, and he took me at my word. By the way, if you're sarcastic with people and they recognize that you're sarcastic with them, they will resent you for not simply telling them what you really want to say. Sarcasm has no upside. Proverbs 12 and 8, excuse me, 12 and 18, gives us a great insight. It says, there is one who speaks rash, rashly like the thrusts of a sword but the tongue of the wise brings healing. You know, sometimes we speak rationally and it's like the thrust of a sword right into someone's heart, right into their side, yeah? But the tongue of wise brings healing. In fact, that whole thing sounds like it's speaking against sarcasm to me. At heart, we all need what this little guy needed. He said everyone, uh, it said, everyone needs recognitions for his accomplishments, but few people make the need known quite as clearly as the little boy who said this to his father. He said, let's play darts. I'll throw, and you say, wonderful. You see, 
that child knew exactly what he wanted. He didn't want, he didn't need instruction. He just wanted his dad to say, that is really great, son. We have to be careful when someone doesn't meet our expectations. We can kill their spirit, as my grandmother Stanley used to say. A pastor of mine told, a friend of mine told me this story when his child, his son, started to ride a bike. Greg gave him a start and he got about three feet and that's all. And Greg was just getting ready to start giving him technique explanations and that he could do better and on and on and on. And the child jumped up and he proclaimed, did you see that dad? I got three pedals in. You see, to the child, he had already accomplished something great. And the worst thing in the world that Greg could have done was to, was to tampen, dampen, to tamp down his spirit, right? Be careful that our expectations don't squelch their enthusiasm. The tongue of the wise brings healings, Proverbs 12 and 18. Now, this can be especially difficult to master when your child wants to participate in something you can't stand. For example, my father really was interested in all of us being great students, being Phi, Kappa, uh, Phi Beta Kappa in college, if you will. Now, we were decent students, but the fact is we were far more interested in athletics. And so what my dad did, because he was an encourager, he got a book and he began to read about baseball and about football so that he could be involved in our lives. Now, I don't have a daughter, but if I had a granddaughter and she wanted to be in ribbon gymnastics, it would be really hard for me. But if that's what she wants to do, I want to be there to encourage her, right? My dad was truly a man of encouragement, and our society is not as God intended it to be. Divorces are caused, uh, have caused many young men to grow up with no father present in the home. And what society has said is that is they've tried to use this uh, in a strange way. And Robert Lewis makes this comment. He said, psychologically, men are more fragile than women. Now, when I first heard that, I, I didn't even believe that because I we had been told as a society, no, 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 it's, it's women who have been put down all these years. But Lewis says, psychologically, men are more fragile than women. Men struggle with their identity much more than women do. Though feminists would have us believe that poor esteem is largely a female problem caused primarily by social inequities, the evidence tells a different story, doesn't it? Look, all the young men that have been involved in the school shootings, all the young men who, and, and almost every one of them, it comes in a, from a fatherless home without a father's influence in it. In fact, Bill Glass of the Bill Glass Prison Ministries made this statement, he said, 100% of the men on death row hate their fathers, love their mothers generally, hate their fathers. You see, the problem is made worse by the fact that moms are trying gamely to help their sons behave like men. But as John Eldridge said, femininity cannot bestow masculinity. Very unpopular thing today. But there are a lot of women that know that, and that's why they bring their sons into the crusader ministry, because they want a strong man in their life who will build them up and support them. That's what we're trying to do about the problem of the absent or the unengaged father. Look, God himself gave us a model in Matthew 3 and 17. He said, after being baptized, Jesus came up immediately from the water and behold, the heavens were opened and he saw the spirit of God descending as a dove and lighting on him. And behold, a voice out of, he out of the heavens said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Now, we used this verse, we the Crusaders, Manhood in Action, used this verse and input from Bill Glass, and we have begun to give men a blessing from a strong male role figure. Stay with me. Before I talk about the blessing, let me talk about encouragement in general and say this. An encourager must be seen as caring and trustworthy. If you want to be an encourager, people have to know that you, that you really, really care. 
you, you know that, that famous statement that's been attributed to 18 different people, but the truth is people don't care what you know until they know you care. That's true. And the second part is trustworthy because we need someone who has shown that they can be trusted over time, not just one time. Sounds a lot like Jesus, doesn't it? But as one of Pastor Jim's children once said, sometimes we need Jesus with flesh. So as we look at the blessing that God spoke over Jesus, notice it conveys three things, three important things. Number one, belonging to God. He said, this is my son, my son, he's mine. God is proud of Jesus too because then he goes on to say, in whom I am well pleased. And lastly, he loves his son because he says, he is my beloved son. Now, <clears throat> it is critically important when you give someone a blessing to convey those three particular things. And therefore the crusaders give our, our seniors a blessing and we use these words. By the way, I wanna interject here. I have given this blessing to my wife. I have given this blessing to my children, not just the Crusader football team. And we say, you're a Crusader and I'm glad. How many times have we heard of the young person who's growing up and the, his mother said, I hate you. I wish you had never been born. Well, in Crusaders, what we're saying to them is you are a Crusader. You belong with us. You belong with us and I'm glad. Secondly, we say, you're, a, you're special. You're special, and I'm proud of you. Everybody's special in some way. You might say unique, but I, would, I think special is a little nicer, and we say, you're special, and I'm proud of you. How much do we long to hear somebody say, I'm proud of you? We, we all look forward to that day if we're believing Christians and we're serious, when the Lord says, well done. Man, that, that, you're special, well done. Thirdly, I love you and I always will. There's an issue of caring there. There's a, an issue of concern. I was lucky enough to explain this concept to my father before he died, and I got a blessing from him. In fact, I've told people this story. We were in a hotel room because Stephen was playing in a select tournament, and I told my dad, I said, we're not going to the field and you're not going out of this room till you give me a blessing. That's how strongly I felt about it. And you know what? To his credit, he did that. He did, he would, and he, and he, it was serious. And it may be that some of you have received a blessing or have never received a blessing from your father or anyone else. We can remedy that. If you have someone in the group in 222 that you would like to bless you, just ask them. Let them know. And we'll do that as part of a... Uh, uh, on a Saturday morning, we'll, let, we'll have a bunch of folks blessed. If you've never had a blessing, you could be a coach with the Crusaders and you could have blessed other people and you may never have had a blessing yourself. Well, we want to make sure that we remedy that. So you just need to tell us and we'll take care of that. You can use our blessing or one that you come up with, but it should include belonging, pride in you, and love. Look at the look how powerful words are. In Judges 6:12, it, it says, The angel of the Lord appeared to Gideon and said to him, The Lord is with you, O valiant warrior. The angel called Gabriel valiant warrior long before he was ever a valiant warrior. When I discipline guys in our program, I generally am not getting in their chops. I'm saying something like this. You are better than that. I'm trying to convey that I believe in you, that you can achieve more than perhaps even you think you can achieve. By the way, so can you. If you need a blessing, you let us know. So the takeaways for this week, Proverbs 18, 21a says, death and life are in the power of the tongue. Sarcasm, number two, is a poor communication tool. Three, John Eldridge has said, femininity can never bestow masculinity. So we need to do something about that. And as we look at the blessing of God that he spoke over Jesus, notice that it conveys three things. Belonging, pride, 
pr being proud of and being loved. Encourage someone this week. See you next Saturday, Lord willing, and the creeks don't rise. Be intentional this week and honor Jesus because he's alive.